Hey guys, it's Parable Park here back at again today with another video. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you are new here, welcome. And right now we're working on the book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. In today's video, we're going through chapters seven and eight. And if you were one of those who have been in the series with us thus far, consider going down into the comment section and let me know what you guys think of it and what also you're getting out of this. But all right guys, chapter seven and eight, let's get into it. Okay, so chapter seven is the secret to self-control. Okay, so the part that we're gonna be reading from is towards the end of chapter seven. And it says, here's the punchline. You can break a habit, but you're unlikely to forget it. Once the mental grooves of a habit have been carved into your brain, they are nearly impossible to remove entirely, even if they go unused for quite a while. And that means that simply resisting a temptation is an ineffective strategy. It is hard to maintain a Zen attitude in a life filled with interruptions. It takes too much energy. In the short run, you can choose the over you can choose to overpower temptation. In the long run, we become a product of the environment that we live in. To put it bluntly, I have never seen someone consistently stick to positive habits in a negative environment. Remember last chapter we talked about environments. But going forward, a more reliable reproach is to cut bad habits off at the source. One of the most practical ways is to eliminate a bad habit is to reduce exposure to the cue that it causes. Wow, we're getting into some good stuff, guys. And actually, there's a couple of examples down here that I might read you too. Uh, one of them says, if you can't seem to get any work done, leave your phone in another room for a few hours. If you were continually feeling like you're not enough, stop following social media accounts that trigger jealousy and envy. Man, that word's for somebody, I know it. Also, if you're wasting too much time watching television, move the TV out of the bedroom. That's a word for some of these Netflixers, I'm telling you what. And another one says, if you're spending too much money on electronics, quit reading reviews of the latest tech gear. If you're playing too many video games, unplug the console and put it in a closet after each use. Golly, you guys, we were really getting into some good stuff in this chapter, man. All right, so I think it's pretty safe to say that this chapter has got some hard hitters in it. But really though, it kind of goes back to one of my previous videos when I talked about the importance of time. If you didn't see that video, be sure to go back and watch that one because it really resembles what I talked about here. But I think for the most part that this chapter really kind of speaks for itself and the aspect of being able to, once again, environments, being able to separate yourself from the negative environments that kind of induce certain habits and behaviors and things of that nature. But one thing I will point out is right here where it says a more reliable approach is to cut bad habits off at the source. And essentially what I can kind of add to that is the fact that like, I think sometimes we spend too much time trying to cut off uh, an issue or cut about a bad habit, but we don't get to the main source of the problem, which it can be a lot of, maybe a lot of past issues, maybe a lot of stress or maybe whatever it could be. We need to search deep down in, once again, the identity, we talked about that in the previous chapters, be able to find out what the underlying issue is and then attack it from that, then go forward. So I think that ties that up. Let's go ahead and move on to chapter eight. All right, chapter eight, how to make habits irresistible. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and read what I have highlighted, then I'm gonna explain what I'm reading afterwards. After a few minutes, your brain loses interest and you begin to feel full. But foods that are in high dynamic contrast keep the experience novel and, ex and interesting, encouraging you to eat more. So it's really interesting to actually see how your brain works in these cases. So this is actually a really interesting topic. And essentially what it's all tying into is the fact that your brain will tell you to eat more of something if it's really good. But at the exact opposite, your brain will tell you to stop eating something if it's not so good or as good as something with more flavor. And so moving on to the last point that I have highlighted, it says, whenever you predict that an opportunity will be rewarding, your levels of dopamine spike in anticipation. And whenever dopamine rises, so does your motivation to act. So kind of my first thoughts on that is that it's kind of amazing to see how, how quickly your brain can jump on a certain opportunity and it will tell you to do something before you can even wrap your head around the whole situation. And so, yeah, I mean, there is so much more in these chapters and in this book overall than what I read to you. 
Um, I can't read you the whole thing because that would probably be illegal. I would highly consider if you want to know more what's in this book, get the book. It's on Amazon. It's not expensive. Just get the book. Get it and become a reader with me. And I want you guys to understand too that I never once used to be a reader. I hated reading. But until I started to develop those habits to start doing them, once again, atomic habits, I started applying some of these things. I started, I started reading. Just always remember that you are your greatest investment. But all right, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. Also go down into the comments section, let me know your favorite part of this video and what you got out of it. And be sure to subscribe for more future content. Thank you guys. See you in the next video.